year, I have the pleasure of providing a report on the activities and operational matters of the Catholic District School Board of Eastern Ontario. This is an honour as it provides me the opportunity to share with all our partners the success of our Catholic school system. As I reflect on this past year, I recognize that it's been truly an exciting one as we've seen students develop in so many different ways, in academics and in their faith. Our theme for the last two years has been, we walk in good company. And as I visit schools and participate in a variety of activities across our system, it is clear we should be thankful for the good company we are so fortunate to keep each and every day. The Catholic District School Board of Eastern Ontario continues to demonstrate excellence in our three strategic goals, achieving literacy for all, living our Catholic faith, and making resources matter. The decisions we make daily as a school community are reflected in these goals and ensure that we remain focused on our core purposes, serving the students and parents in our school system to the very best of our ability. I invite you to join me in this reflection of our past year. Teachers, administrators, and support staff members gathered on several occasions for special CDSBEO Faith Days, which allow them to continue the ongoing work on our board theme, We Walk in Good Company, and to make plans to move forward as an organization rooted in our Catholic faith. The Catholic Education Coalition continues to be an active voice in the board and in the province. This group consists of board staff and partners who come together over the course of the year to hold regional events to proclaim and celebrate the vitality of Catholic education in our board. Another success this past year was Catholic Education Week, our annual board-wide mass celebrated by the Most Reverend Paul Andre de Roche, Bishop of Alexandria Cornwall, once again saw our many partners in Catholic education gather in Kempville. Schools held open houses, celebratory masses, and many other activities as a way to reach out to the wider Catholic community and invite them into our schools. As part of our ongoing response to the Ministry of Education's Character Development Initiative, Virtue Prayer Cards have been developed and sent to each of our schools. The family resource Becoming People of Virtue was also developed and is giving families concrete ideas about how to bring the Catholic virtues to life at home. The Parent Involvement Committee provides excellent leadership and support to Catholic school councils by encouraging participation in events that engage parents in their children's learning. This year, PICS sponsored two inspiring evening sessions with motivational speaker Alvin Law. The committee also encourages Catholic school councils to apply for parent reaching out grants each year, and it held a Catholic school council summit to orient Catholic school council members in the fall of 2009. Our teachers and professional staff have the profound challenge of making reading a reality for all children. The demands of the information age require that people be competent readers and writers if they want to become full participants in society. We remain focused on providing children with the best possible reading instruction in order to read, write, listen, speak, view, represent, and think critically about ideas. Our teachers are implementing the components of effective literacy programs, including ongoing assessment, targeting or personalized instruction, and student-based, open-ended activities that encourage higher-order thinking. Our literacy coaches work with administrators and teachers to deepen the understanding of the reading and writing process and to grow their teaching and learning strategy repertoire. Literacy instruction is supported through lesson models, by observing classroom instruction, and through one-on-one -on -one and grade-level teacher coaching. The Schools in the Middle initiative is designed to support the work of school improvement teams in a family of schools to improve instructional effectiveness and pedagogy to further develop instructional leadership capacity. Through professional dialogue and study, system and school improvement teams are further developing their capacity to support the professional learning required to raise achievement levels. The seven schools that participated during the 2009-2010 school year focused on problem solving and mathematics. In reading, French, and English teachers participated in teacher moderation sessions. Through the lens of the school effectiveness framework, students learning in all of our schools within the board is reviewed, with particular emphasis on district review schools. The process provides a great opportunity to celebrate each school's strengths and sharpens the focus on areas for future growth. Our board continues to strive to meet the unique strengths and needs of the First Nation, Métis, and Inuit students by encouraging participation in voluntary self-identification. 
Additional awareness of Aboriginal cultural sessions were offered to elementary arts teachers, French, and English social science teachers. This year's elementary results showed notable gains in the percentage of students achieving the provincial standard in all strands of the EQAO assessments. Students in four of the six assessments are achieving the provincial standard and the board is on track for the provincial target of 75% by 2011. Primary writing results increased by 11% while junior writing increased by 9. The gender gap for junior writing decreased by 7%. Results from the Grade 9 Mathematics Assessment continue to rise and the Ontario Secondary School Literacy Test results continue to indicate a high rate of success for our students. In January 2010, I invited Dr. Michael Fullen and Dr. Lynn Charette to begin working with teams from all our schools to deepen district-wide reform. Through a series of six sessions, Dr. Fullen and Dr. Charette empowered our school leaders to embrace change as they shared their knowledge and expertise about the 13 research-based parameters for improving performance. During each session, school teams worked to analyze their school data, plan appropriate interventions for students who are not achieving the provincial standard, and to set targets for sustained student improvement. A learning fair where all school teams shared their findings of their inquiry question was the culminating event in a truly outstanding process. The Special Education Department is continuing to place a strong emphasis on raising the bar and closing the gap for all learners. Initiatives such as increasing capacity around assistive technology have clearly led to major gains in our students' ability to complete identifiable and measurable performance tasks. The Special Education Advisory Committee actively support the department, its programs, and its services. The committee arranged a successful Special Education Advisory Symposium in May. Special Education continues to work with the Religious and Family Life Education Department to implement and support restorative practices, an initiative to deal with conflict in our schools. Critical reading, writing, and thinking skills are at the heart of our comprehensive framework to support all learners. Critical and Creative Thinking, the fourth of our six-part board magazine series, was released in the spring. These excellent resources explain and expand on the foundation of Learning for All. Threat assessment training and protocol development continues with various community partners. By working closely together, we're able to share expertise and to better support our students and their families. The new resource document, Checkered Flags, Everyone's Responsibility, is an excellent example of what is possible when professionals work together. The Specialist High Skill Major is a program that allows students to connect their learning to an economic sector. It makes the transition easier from secondary school to the world of work or post-secondary education. In the last year alone, more than 250 students took part in the 12 programs offered in our board. Projects have been developed to provide dual credit programs for secondary students through the partnership of secondary schools and colleges guided by the School to College to Work initiative. 25% of our secondary students took part in such programs last year. The Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program supports and encourages senior high school students to link a skilled trade related co-op placement towards a formal apprenticeship application. In many cases, students participating in these programs will be finishing year one of their apprenticeships, earning dual credits as well as earning their secondary school diplomas at the same time. Our board shares the government's commitment to develop healthier lifestyle habits for our students. We're taking positive steps towards meeting the ministry's nutritional standards. Ongoing training for the school personnel and the sharing of best practices among our schools will ensure full compliance by September 1st, 2011. The board officially launched two major capital projects this past year. A new 22-classroom addition is now under construction at St. Michael Catholic High School in Kempville, and a 12-classroom addition is being built at St. Thomas Aquinas Catholic High School in Russell. Both projects are being funded by the Ministry of Education's Energy Efficient Schools Program and will welcome students in the 2011-2012 school year. We were once again blessed to have a strong Catholic Student Senate this past year. The group gathered for regular meetings throughout the school year under the capable leadership of student trustee Chris Wallisak in 2009-10 and Hilary Janot in 2010-11. and 11. A particular highlight was a leadership that the Catholic Student Senate provided to ensure that the Just Us Youth Day Symposium was a huge success. The symposium is a day-long character-building conference that hosts grade 10 representatives from each secondary school. 
This year's theme placed a strong emphasis on awareness of justice issues that confront Canada's Aboriginal peoples. This annual conference, now in its fifth year, continues to be a very engaging experience for our students. The Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act sets a goal of an accessible Ontario for all. In order to comply with this legislation, the Human Resources Department ensured that all staff within the Catholic District School Board of Eastern Ontario were appropriately trained, ensuring we provide services that are free of barriers and biases. The Catholic District School Board of Eastern Ontario is a community of learners responding to not only those in need close to us, but also to those in need around the world. We have seen numerous examples of school communities that have responded to a variety of social justice needs in their own communities and abroad. Finally, I would like to thank Archbishop O'Brien, Archbishop Prendergast, and Bishop DeRoche for their continued support and guidance they provide to our school system. As well, I would like to thank all those individuals and organizations, and there are many, who partner with us in good company on the journey of providing quality Catholic education for all of our learners. We are so pleased that our students and staff are finding inspiration through our faith and answering the call to help others. God bless. Yeah.